Our goal pruning, um, the, the big aspect about this wide trellis is you can always renew your wood. We trim it, we prune it twice a year, once in the summer, once in the dormant. I haven't pruned this yet this year, uh, but the theory is we just take out the old wood and leave the young wood in. Uh, and ideally, we like our, our limbs about this far apart, right here. Any closer than that, we start having color problems. So as you can see, we've been, the guys last year and so forth, they've been leaving these young limbs coming in. And this year, as soon as wood starts looking like this, I tell the guys to take it out. Even if it leaves a big space on the wire because a new limb is going to come in in a year or two and fill it in. So this year, you know, an aggressive cut would be right to here to take this out. And then you leave this in its place. You got this young one here coming up. And, uh, you know, if we move down, we find some better examples. Last year, the guys cut these pretty hard. We had some good firewood in here that we had to chop up. So there's not a lot of big cuts this year to make. But uh, in the summer, I tell them to leave two or three suckers. When we're summer pruning, we gotta, I tell them always to leave two or three of these whips coming up for renewal wood. Anything coming up in the middle, I tell them to cut off. You can see where the cuts were made here. And I always tell them to leave the renewal wood to originate from down low. There's no reason to leave it up here because then we're losing fruiting area down here once that new wood is uh, is into production. So, although the, this past year we were a little off, my thinning was too aggressive with the weather and all. But the previous three years we've averaged over a, a thousand bushels an acre of just that's all fresh fruit. There's no juice or anything involved there. It's by far our best yielding uh, block of fresh fruit of quality apples. The light reception is excellent. We get good color when we when we farm it properly. We get good color all the way down to the ground, even the ones on the bottom. We just have to hand thin a little more aggressive on the bottom than we do up in the top. And uh, tell us a little bit about the, the mechanical harvest. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we've got some other varieties of this, the Empire's McCowan, some Cortland's and all. The uh, Duffy Mott's did a mechanical harvesting demonstration here with uh, Peterson from down in Virginia. They've got a good harvester they're working on. It works pretty well on sweet cherries. And they tried it on apples. And what they have is a catching frame much like a uh, any sour cherry harvester that you're familiar with. It's at an angle. It's about, you know, a foot and a half from the tree surface, and they have an oscillator that comes through and, and hits the limbs. So in theory, the apple will just fall straight from the limb onto the catching frame without any of the, of the shaking happening. The oscillator just hits the limb like this, and the apples fall. It, it works better for cherries than it did for apples. <laughs> it's, it's, it's got some good ideas, but as far as fresh fruit, it, it's not there yet. There's, the apples were beat up too much. It left a lot on the tree. And it was very time consuming. You know, one good picker could, you know, one or two good pickers could outpick this pick this machine during the day. So, <laughs> but again, there's a lot of good ideas there, and it, it's just not there for apples yet. For sweet cherries and things, that you know, it did pretty well. Yeah, but the thing cost $100,000. <laughs> uh, and on the McCowan's, the soft skin variety. It, it was two thirds of the bin was tore up. They could only pack out about 25 or 30 percent of the apples out uh, of the bin. A short stem. Yeah. You know, the empires fared a little better as far as a pack out was concerned. You want to talk about the genesis of the system? Let me just make a couple quick comments. It's getting awful cold, but I just want to point out a couple of things about this. It really fits the tip of these uh, spur type varieties like empire. If you look at them, just these columns of spurs. Uh, you can have a big, vigorous thing like that, it just spurs up and then it just sits there and fruits. The key that we learned on this is exactly what he said uh, early on, learning to renew limbs. And so last year, making a cut like that, leaving a gap and growing new wood, making that cut. <clears throat> and over in here, taking out a big limb right down there that used to come up through here, keeps it relatively open. What happens when you take out the whole limb, you take out the most vigorous top. That allows him to keep this pickable from the ground without any real serious pruning up in the top. It just is all spurred up and real easy to manage. So despite uh, some of the negative comments about white trellis in the last couple of days, it is an excellent system for Empire, for several other varieties as well. 
if you can figure out how to hold down costs on the construction of the trellis. Now Ed Burnett put up the trellis that we were using at the time. Since this was gone up, we switched to two angled posts. It can be done a little cheaper, but still, it is a more expensive trellis. But again, we've never grown empire on a system that's as productive as this. And easy to manage with recycling of limbs. You just cut them out and replace them on the trellis, and if, you, know, you just keep this thing going almost indefinitely with that style of thing. When you see new wood like this in a white trellis, you know, that just is producing wonderful fruit, allows you to cut out other ones, and it's just a pretty simple thing to prune and to teach. Yeah. This is on 26? Yeah. yeah. The other thing, just from a physiological perspective, <clears throat> when you take a single trunk and split it into about 10 branches, is what we want, five on each side or four on each side, you really reduce the vigor of each of those branches considerably rather than having an entire uh, main pipe in a central trunk. That allows us to keep it down to this pickable from the ground level without any serious manipulation of it and no serious pruning. Other varieties that grow a lot of vigorous shoots in the middle might be more difficult, but with Empire it's a pretty simple thing. Now with that, uh, let's uh, quickly move over to the vertical axis because <laughs> the sun going down, it's good. And uh, I trimmed it already this year. I've been working on trying to get big galas, getting rid of some of that poor fruiting wood and leaving the vigorous wood in. That's the new craze around here is to cut the weeping wood out and leave the vigorous wood for good sized galas so we'll see what happens but uh, it's a pretty straightforward planting system we've never done any lib spreading we just we do all of our tr tree training through pruning if the branch is no good when it's in its second or third leaf we just cut it out the tying limbs spread limbs all that stuff I don't think it works very well and uh, that's it the best we've gotten out of here is five or six hundred bushels. That was two years ago, I believe. And it was overcropped with small apples. So, <laughs> we're, as I said, we're still trying to get this figured out with this variety. Now, would you plant any closer in the row than what you've done in between the rows? For, for us, 15 feet between rows, uh, that's as close as I want to get with our, you know, equipment and mowers and you know, it doesn't look it now, but when come harvest, you know, you get new growth and some apples, it gets pretty tight in there for us. I, I like I like 15 foot row spacing, and uh, between the trees, I like the way this looks on the nine root stock with this variety. So I wouldn't go any I won't go any closer. Yields gonna make it for you. Well, <laughs> what I'm hoping is in the next three years we'll have our yields come up into the seven or eight hundred bushel range, and. We'll come out of this okay, but who knows? Any questions for GIF at all? Everybody's freezing, aren't they? <laughs> you know, it's interesting to compare the varieties that we could look at Empire, but we don't want to walk down there. But Empire tends to produce longer shoots that spur up. And so this kind of spacing works great for Empire because in the top we have longer branches. Gala tends to produce in the top, once it's calmed down, a lot of these short ones. So you can go with closer in row spacings down to the four feet and still have adequate room. The reason I asked the question, and you know, I respect your opinion, but I would have planted them a little closer because I want the tops, every one of those tops just a little bit closer in the row. With Gala, with Empire, I think that's a wonderful spacing that you've got there, just to show the difference between the two varieties. I like the idea of not doing much tying down it saves a lot, and when you use crop to bring the limbs down, you can get this kind of tree without much uh, input in terms of tying things down. Why do you want them closer? What's wrong with More yield. Tree density. Did, now they gave a whole. Did I give an hour talk on that yesterday? Thousand dollar an acre land. The land is interesting here. What's the urgency of getting high yield per acre? Why is the same level more acres? That's an excellent question that I wish Allison would answer. <laughs> no, I have an answer for it, but... <clears throat> okay, it's on the bus. There are some inherent costs that are on an acre basis and some that oh, are on a per tree is. basis. Come here, Allison. Come on. Go ahead. I want to hear what you're <laughs> Come on. Point counterpoint then. Many, many of the costs are on an acre basis, so the more you can utilize an acre efficiently, you save on those per acre costs. The other costs that are on a per tree basis are simply in the purchase price of the tree. Once you get beyond that, it's mostly on an acre basis. Not every one of them, but most of them. 
And although land is cheap, good land is not always around. And so you pick the best land on your farm, pack the trees on there, and you'll be more profitable. My opinion. Allison? We can discuss it from a lot of <laughs> That's true. Yeah, that sounds like a good okay. idea to me. You get the microphone. On the bus? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Giff. <laughs> Pleasure. Looks like someone. Thanks for pushing snow for us.